So a new Mac is exciting, but whether you're coming from an old Mac or coming from Windows, there's a lot you need to do to make this machine as powerful and efficient as you want and need it to be. I know it may be tempting to just start working right away and, and using your new MacBook, but I promise you if you do that, you're doing it wrong. In this video, we're gonna talk about 11 things that I always do every time I get a new Mac, a new iMac, a new MacBook, or, or literally any other device that runs Mac OS from Apple. These are things that I think drastically improve efficiency, and whether you've been using Mac for a long time, or if this is the first time you're using Mac, these are things, hopefully some of these 11, are things that you didn't know about before, and like I said, make it so much easier and more user-friendly to use Mac OS. And these are things like allowing you to snap windows on one side of the screen or the other, easier ways to search for files, and just just other little subtle improvements that make the experience substantially better than it otherwise would be. So with that being said, let's just get right into the video. Starting off with number one, this is an app called Magnet. And I promise most on this list are actually settings, but I had to make Magnet number one because this is my absolute must have on any Mac I ever use. If I borrow someone else's Mac and they don't have Magnet on there, like it just feels clunky, it feels wrong, and, and I just can't have the efficiency I'm looking for. So. What is Magnet? Well, Magnet, like I said, is an app that you can get on, on Mac, and it's going to allow you to use the hotkeys, or you can just click and drag and make the windows easily snap to the left side, the right side, the top, the bottom, a quadrant. It's so easy to do this, and like I said, I'm always using the hotkeys as well, so if I just hit Control, Option, Right, or Left, uh, it'll just quickly make it a half screen like you see here. So to get it, fortunately, very easy, you just go into the App Store, and you search for Magnet. It looks like this one right here, and you just install it, super easy to use. Magnet is definitely number one on this list. Number two on this list is actually in the trackpad settings. So obviously more catered to a MacBook right now, but if we just go to Spotlight, hit the magnifying glass and type in trackpad, and go to trackpad settings, we can then have, you see three little tabs on the top. So the first of all, I highly recommend you go through these and change the speed for whatever is right for you. Uh, I always enable tap to click, so you can just click on things just by tapping your keyboard, rather than pushing it all the way down to click. It just makes it feel easier to use and a little faster. And also, I recommend changing the secondary click um, to, right now, I tap with two fingers, but some people like to tap with the bottom right corner, bottom left corner, like you can really customize a lot here. And even more importantly than any of these, I highly recommend you go over to more gestures, and I personally enable all of these, I think they're super efficient, but you don't have to enable all of them, at the very least I would recommend reading through them and seeing what each one is so you can get used to using these multi-finger gestures. Like for example, if I slide up with all four fingers, it shows me all of the apps I have open. If I swipe down with three fingers, it shows me just the apps that are related to this one. So if I had two settings windows open, they would both show up right here. So. I mean, I hate to cheat and like bundle in a bunch of settings right here, but the trackpad settings are definitely something that you need to change on every MacBook as soon as you get it. And like I said, experiment these, eventually you'll find out which ones are the right ones for you. Now, the next setting I wanna talk about is actually another one very specifically related to the MacBook. So if we go back into Spotlight and we just type in uh, dock and menu bar, so dock and menu, dock and menu bar, it'll go down to our system preferences. And within here, I highly recommend you go down to battery and enable show battery percentage. And you're gonna see on the top of my screen right there showing the battery percentage. It's something that I always like to see because yeah, they show you a little image right there, but without knowing exactly how much time you have left, like you're not, you're always gonna be looking up there and wondering how much battery you actually have. So showing the percentage is something that I like to do. It does make it a little bit more cluttery and there are different ways like bartender is something people like to use to really clean up the menu bar on the top. But for me personally, I'm not bothered by that, especially with the MacBook Pro because you have the notch up there anyway, so it just kind of sits neatly on the right side of your screen. So number four in this list is actually changing the default apps because of course Apple has their own software and they want you to use Safari and Apple Music and things like that, but maybe that's not what you like to use. Maybe you wanna use Google Chrome like I'm using right here. And if that's the case, well, let's start off with the browser. If you wanna change that, you go up to the top, you click on the Apple, you go to System Preferences, and then from there you go to General and then you go to Default Browser. So General, and right now Default Browser is set to Google Chrome. Similarly, with any kind of file, if you want music to open up with QuickTime instead of Apple Music, or if you want images to open up in Photoshop, whatever it might be, if you go and find the file in Finder, you right click on it and you go down to Get Info. So we go to Get Info. And then if you go down to Open With, you'll see that right now it opens with uh, the preview app and that's the default. I could change it and say that I wanna open up all images with QuickTime or Google Chrome or whatever else. If we just say Google Chrome, I can say change all. And anytime a JPEG is opened, it will be opened with Google Chrome. Now, obviously I don't recommend opening with Chrome. It makes a lot more sense the way it was, just opening it uh, with preview. So I'm gonna change it back and make sure that's what we have. 
And that brings us to the next one on this list, which also happens to be the sponsor of today's video. So a special thanks to Crisp for sponsoring this video. Crisp is a software that I love to use on my MacBook because I end up being very mobile. And wherever I am, there might be sounds around me. And if I am trying to get on a video call, which honestly I'm doing all the time these days, then Crisp is a great way to block out sounds around you. Essentially active noise cancellation for anybody on the other line as well as for you. So they can not only block sounds from your own microphone, but also from anybody else. If they have a noisy dog in the background, if somebody has a jackhammer outside, whatever it might be, it's really good at blocking sounds around you. And Crisp has been adding a ton of new innovations as well, from timers to show how long you're speaking to all types of things like that. And it's actually very, very easy to use as well. So you can see on the top of my screen, I have Crisp right there and it allows me to choose what microphone input I have and what speaker I'm using as well. So I can always be sure that my microphone and speaker are always set up properly. And then if I'm using like Google Meets or whatever it might be, within that app, I just set it to select the microphone as crisp. So essentially it tells my laptop that crisp is a microphone and it's going to work very well. So here's an example right now to see how crisp actually works. Okay, so right now I'm just playing some white noise and just talking to my laptop as if I were in a meeting. And if we go and turn crisp on right now, so we remove the noise, just like that, you'll see that suddenly you can hear a lot better as if the white noise wasn't even there. And this works with barking dogs, this works with literally any other sound that's going on. And the best part is Crisp is completely free to use for up to 240 minutes a week. Now the next one on this list is going to be especially relevant for anybody who has a newer Mac. So this might be the MacBook Pro, this might be the new iMac, anything that has an M1 chip on there. Obviously we have Rosetta, which is going to allow you to run Intel, Intel style software, but we also have M1 style software as well. And M1 is going to be a little bit more optimized. So sometimes I wanna know if the software I have is the right software, because by default, when I copied this over for my Intel iMac, when I set up the, the MacBook Pro originally, it brought over a lot of the Intel software and I didn't want that. Like for example, I wanted the M1 native app for all of the Adobe products and things like that. So, so the way you'd actually go about figuring out which apps are running native to M1 and which ones are using Intel and Rosetta is actually going to Activity Monitor. So if you look at all the apps I'm running right now, for example, Adobe Photoshop, if you look over here to the column that says kind, it says Apple, which lets me know that it's running native on M1, which is great. It's going to be a lot more efficient and really better utilize this processor. But as we go down, you'll see some things like, for example, uh, the, the Creative Cloud Library, and I believe OBS, my, my screen recording software, or, yeah, right there, is actually running on Intel. So that's going to be a little bit less efficient, and it just gives you a better idea uh, if you're ever wondering, like, is this going to be killing my battery faster? Do I have the right software? That's the way to actually go about checking that. Now, the next one on this list is a huge efficiency boost for myself, as well as I know a lot of other people do this as well. And this is actually better managing your notifications. So of course, I mean, a lot of people know that you can go up to the top quick menu and go to do not disturb and things like that. But sometimes you want notifications on for like calendar and things like that, but, but you don't wanna be getting text messages, or maybe you don't wanna be getting other notifications that just clutter up your workspace and distract you. So the way to actually do this is hit the, go to spotlight and type in notifications notification. And if we go to our notification settings, you can actually go down app by app and enable or disable and choose exactly how the notifications show up. If you want nothing, if you want a banner, if you want an alert. And I found that this really improves my workflow by not being distracted by notifications that are constantly popping up. Next up, we have a couple really big optimizations for Finder. And so I've been using Windows for a really long time, through high school, through college, when I worked as an engineer, like a lot of bigger industries and corporations and schools like to predominantly use Windows. Of course, I've always used Apple on the side, but one of the things I always thought Windows did a little better was how they had their, their file management. So for them, they have files, here we have Finder. And so Finder, there's a couple things that I always change about it. The first thing is on the sidebar, I really love changing what's actually showing up there. For example, I always want to have access to my account right here. So if we go to Michael Bryan, it shows me my music folder, my pictures that are otherwise a little bit harder to access. Things like that are really easy to add to the left side. So what I what you'd want to do for that is just open up Finder, click on Finder on the top and go to preferences. And here you can choose what's actually going to show up on the sidebar. If it doesn't show up at first, just click on the little sidebar tab. And you can choose if you want movies or music or pictures to show up on the left side. And just like that, it's always going to show up there. Similarly, if you have another folder specifically that you want to be there, you can click and drag it over and it'll add it right there. Of course, you can also rearrange them by clicking and dragging them up and down as well. So I really like optimizing that. I set shortcuts there because it's just so much easier to always go over there and have it ready to go. Additionally, while we're in preferences, so let's go back up to Finder, go to preferences. There are another couple really big things that I want to do here as well. 
So for the next one, I want to go over to the advanced tab on the top and say when performing a search, search the current folder. This is something that, like I said, there were a couple things that I thought Windows always did a little bit better. By default, I think Finder kind of struggles to search. It takes a long time and when they search your entire Mac for something, I think it's better when you're just searching the current folder. For example, I have like all my photos folder. I name all of my photos. So they're really specific to the year and I'll open the folder and I'll look for any photo from like 2020. And it's searching my entire Mac for any file that ever had 2020 written in it. So searching just the folder instead makes it a lot faster and usually gives you more of what you're actually looking for. Additionally, another little bonus one while we're here is that I always select a box that says keep folders on top whenever you're in Windows and you're sorting by name. So that's just something that to keep the folders at top, it's easier to navigate through things instead of having to scroll down and find the different folders that are intermixed with files. Like, I don't know, that's something that I always like to do, but to each their own. And then the last finder related tip I have is actually related to keeping everything really nice and organized. Like I hate when files are like slightly off center and you have to like move them around. I, I snap it to grid and the way to snap to grid is actually going up to view, go down to sort by and select snap to grid. This I think is absolutely essential. And like, I can't stand it when people don't have this enabled. Now, as far as the doc goes, you guys might've noticed right now that I have it on the left side. A lot of times people have it on the bottom because the aspect ratio is very long and wide. I have always found it more useful to have it on the left side or the right side, depending on where you normally have a second monitor. Um, so the bottom, like some people like that and that's great and it's very familiar, but I recommend double clicking or right clicking on the center bar and saying position on screen, I make it on the left side because a lot of times I'll plug this into a second monitor that's on the right side and I have a nice wide display without wasting that bottom space there. Additionally, there are some other fu fundamental things you can change here, like uh, besides position on screen, I usually turn magnification off. So some people like to, when they move their mouse over, like each icon gets bigger as they go. I leave it off, I think it's distracting, it's a little bit annoying to me, but again, if it's off and you wanna turn it on, you can do that here. Similarly, turn hiding on, it's something I never do, but I know a lot of people love that extra space, so that's another thing you might wanna consider doing. So those are the 11 customizations I make every time I get a new Mac. But there's a couple bonus tips right here for anybody who is new to using Mac. And these are actually all related to your settings up top. So first of all, the keyboard brightness on the MacBook Pro can easily be adjusted by going up to your little quick settings, going to keyboard brightness and adjusting it right there. Secondly, if you are, if you're not using a MacBook Pro, you can still use these other two things. If you want to use a, an iPad, for example, as a sidecar display, meaning just a disconnected second display, wirelessly working like another monitor, you can actually go to display, click on the little right icon and say connect to, and then select iPad. That's going to allow it to actually work and you can drag your mouse over. It just totally works as a second display. I always thought that was really cool. And surprisingly, a lot of people don't even know they can do that. And then the third thing up here is actually related to the sound. It's just a really quick, easy way to make sure that you're using the right speaker, the right microphone, and everything's set up properly whenever you're ready to get on a meeting. But of course, if you're going to use the volume buttons or the brightness buttons on your keyboard, another quick little tip here is you can actually adjust them a little bit more granular than you believe. So a lot of people think that you only have like, what is that, 20 different settings there. Actually, you can adjust it a little bit more granularly if you hold down Option and Shift at the same time. So Option and Shift allows you to go down in increments of, I believe, three or four. That's going to give you exactly the right brightness or exactly the right volume, especially if you're plugged into speakers. Like sometimes you just wanna get exactly that volume. So guys, that's what I have to say about the Mac or MacBook Pro or any other Mac you're using. These are the optimizations I always do when I get a new device. And as you saw throughout this video, pretty much every single one of these optimizations can be found just by typing them into Spotlight. Always remember to use Spotlight to find applications and folders and settings and, and anything else. It's one of the best things that Mac has. So if you guys enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. Once again, thanks to Crisp for sponsoring this video. So I'm Mike O'Brien, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.